there's a lot of younger generations out there that are rediscovering all these fantastic games from way back in Nintendo days when they first started all through the PS 1, 2, 3 like Dreamcast you know all those in fact I I, I don't know if Sega's still connected the with the Dreamcast I'm that I'm not sure of that I'll have to look through but there are still a lot of marketing for the older ones compared to the new ones because well again price and availability and uh, that I am not going to say the manufacturers at fault for that uh, the price and demand yes but then you've got these uh, hacks out there that will buy the system and turn around and sell them for double to triple the price. So I can kind of see why they're kind of tinkering them, like trickling them out the way they do. But Okay, so I have a question for you. Would you play a PS2, PS3 game that you bought off of eBay because obviously you couldn't buy it new anymore or some game store for, say... Let's just say, because nostalgia is a thing, uh, $167 for that game, or would you pay that $167 for a new game? It depends like, uh, on the PS system that I have. PS5 versus PS2. Which one? Because I've seen some Tiger Wood games as well as some other games, and I've seen them as high as $300 and different and that prices and stuff. Right, and I'm not saying like that's right, but I mean it's not right. So it's expensive. Now, yes, you can go to other places and get them cheaper and stuff like that. But here's the question: Would you pay $167 for a PS2 game, or would you pay $167 for a brand new PS5 game? There should be no reason, none whatsoever, that a game, even how old it is should be set at 165 degree or 165 dollars dollars i don't care how much it was played or how rare it is because it's a game right it's not like a car that people are just gouging you left right and center i would rather have them come out every so often kind of like what Disney does and does a reprint of them to sell them well they like the, the movies is, but some nostalgia people are, are going to argue with you because they're going to say these games are collectors the work of art and to some degree I agree I mean I mean you're not I mean games take you know creativity to make you know they tell a story you know and the gameplay is unique and so each world and each game has its own uniqueness in that value so some people are going to say you know, like because of its rarity or because of the print or because of the type that it was at the time it's worth more because it's a collector's thing. you know what I mean it's sort of like a car from the 50s you know people they value that because of the nostalgia and the proper value of it. Uh, I don't and care. Some people define video games are the same way. Yeah, well, uh, you know, then that means, you know, once my underwear gets 20 years old, I should be able to sell it for like 50 bucks because it's nostalgic and if it was worn by me. And, and there should be no, it, no, <laughs> no, no, it don't work that way. You know, like, uh, and that's the thing. It, everything is all depends on the person too. And what they think it is for the value. And if it's like only a hundred people that like that video game, you're telling me it should you should be able to charge a thousand dollars for that game just because only a 
100 people liked it and only 100 copies sold out of the 5,000 that they made. Like, to me, like, that that's... Yeah, it is rare, but it's obviously... It didn't do that well if it only sold 100 out of 5,000. And there's a reason for it. Right, but we're not we're not talking about we're talking about some games that are rare because they were only a few were printed, or because um, some games were so popular, right? But now you you it's difficult to find a copy for them, at least a good copy of them, right? So, and I'm not talking price gouging and scalpers. I'm not talking stuff like that, but I'm just talking like what is the value? Of that okay so let's let's talk say you know Spyro the dragon you know what's the value of Spyro the dragon you know how much would you, you, should, you, do you think should be paid now are you like talking that? about original copy or are you yep. talking about yep. the copy that they remade no the original the original yeah like if you were to go get the original PS1 version of that right which I do believe I have Right. What do you think the value of that is worth? I you know, do not think it's a couple hundred dollars, I'll tell you that you much. Play it? And would you play it? Well, more or less I would play it, but I'm not going to spend $150 because some person thinks that that's what it's worth. Alright, so if somebody wanted to buy your copy of Spyro, how much would you sell it for? Well, first, I really wouldn't. But second of all, I really don't know. And I wouldn't charge them, uh, like, $100 for the damn thing. Because I know the replay, they're going to get the replay value out of it. Like, I, I've i had to deal with going in and trading my games that people are charging a whole bunch for. Get, like five dollars because that's what the value is right but yet yeah. other people are claiming oh it's a popular game and it's rare <laughs> and they're charging say fifty dollars for it no why should anybody else want more than that because a lot of people say well they're going by a list right and I'm going exactly they're going by a list And they need to make money, so which is true, but no, I can't. No, see what the money thing. I, I don't. I would just probably put more of the price on the system, and it just kind of maybe five bucks a game or whatever, throwing in on top of it. Like there's no sense of charging a hundred dollars per game. Because if you really figure, I think in the long run, I think it would probably better to just wait and see if they actually do a reprint of physical copies. But they take like uh, PS Vita games and right. other digital Which I media. think really got undersold, tell you the truth. Yeah. And other digital media, um, and I think some PS4 games, and PS3 games. I'm not exactly sure. And they they take the digital copy of those games, and they print them on disc to preserve uh, the gaming, right? Uh, of those particular consoles and, and that generation. Now they obviously they have copyright issues and they have to talk to the company and they do all those other kind of stuff. But once they get the permission to print these physical copies of the disc, right? They sell them at a price, right? Um, I wouldn't say their prices are outrageous, but my question is: is would you buy, you know, one of those over the digital copy? 
So you're talking about they put they put it onto a CD format? Yes. An actual physical copy. Some of the digital games that are only digital games, or some of them are, um, or they do remake of 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 ones that were uh, sold but are no longer sold. Well, if they could do that and they got the permission from, uh, say, Sony or whatever, uh, and they could do that, like, absol absolutely, and if they did, like, a... No, the question they, is, would you buy one? That's what I'm saying. If they could do it and they got the permission from Sony... And it's a physical copy, and they sell it at a decent price, like say forty dollars, like it was back in the just a few years ago. Absolutely, I would, because you've got the physical copy, which is basically what they do with the reprint, right? So, yeah. and yeah, that's what this company does. You know, if you get, uh, they do a reprint. The question is, is would you pay the prices that they ask for? I would definitely, because I think it's worth it. But if they're going to go in there and then do all that and then turn around and sell it for what the original copy was for, I don't know. I don't think I would. Okay, but now here comes to the next big question. So, say they sell one of the games for like 50 bucks or something. Right? Yeah. And you think that's worth it. And you definitely buy it. So here's my next question. What if, just for whatever reason, the Destroy. game Destroy. that they printed came out glitched? Well, if they could eventually, like, find... If they got the rights where they could add to it or fix the problems then by all means go right ahead because I know there are people out there that do that they will do that with uh, PC games and some will fix the glitches themselves or whatever by adding mods right so but th this is a physical copy and my right. question to you is so I mean I guess you'd probably feel like everybody else right you'd be a little upset the glitches. So how would you propose that they would fix your physical copy of the glitched version of the $50 game that you just bought? By having patch updates. On where? On, on a have a dedicated have a, have a dedicated right. server. Like Microsoft, or like Microsoft has theirs for their app stores. But then you've got Ubisoft for their games, and then you've got PlayStation for their games. You so know what then I'm the saying? question is: then the question is, is why not just buy the digital copy? Because that digital copy may no longer exist. But if you're having a dedicated server for it, you could probably just put it on there, right? In a way, I guess you can. I think that's what they're doing with their PlayStation Now type of thing, right? where they have older games and they've moved them over to those areas like the PlayStation Now store and whatnot. But, you know, if they could make, if they're able to do patches, that would be great. The problem is, is these people that are printing the the physical copies of the disc are not the ones that made the game. They're not the developers. And no. So, and the most of the developers have moved on, right? They've gone on to other projects and stuff like that. Right. So it's n not like they're going to be given the source code um, in most cases to you know fix or no, the source code is already that. on there. I don't know uh, how much of that they have access to, 
right? And these people that are printing the games, they're also not game developers. No. That's the other issue. So how would they be able to fix a physical copy of the game? See, and then that lies in the other challenge. Then they'd have to reprint all the broken versions, right? They'd have to redistribute all the... If, it, if it's too broken, do, just don't list it. Is what I'm saying. But, like, you can have so many different ways. Like, it, you can hire... Like, if they really wanted to and, and and maybe have people start their careers this way, is if, you know, how they come out of school, programming school and everything like that, right? And they had a business where they would go in there and they would do those type of things because that's a field that they want to get into. Why not have a school where they can do these little upgrades and have the... Um, copyrights and then kind of fix them because then you know it, it's going to give those up and comers a name it's going to give them experience right and it'll give but, them the know how but now you're spending a lot of money for older console generation type games so this is in reference back to the god of war game that came out right see they're already making the next god of war right so the question is is yes it may only take one or two people to come back and fix this one issue with the game and i guess the real question would be well why don't they and that i mean i don't know how to answer that i don't think anybody can really answer that Maybe, um, I mean, I guess maybe a lot of people have already probably reported the issue. Right? Oh, yeah, it's like two or three years old. Okay. So, but the thing is, is if they're making the next, you know, God of War, do you think maybe they don't think it's a big enough of an issue that needs to be fixed? Or do you think they don't have the time to fix it? could be anything maybe they just don't want to because you know because some companies are like that where they're just like yeah whatever and move on to the next project okay but the people that that made God of War do you think they're like that I don't know I th think it kind of depends No, that, that's hard to say. Well, if it's been three years now and they're not going to fix it, to me, that's just pretty much like they're, they're that's it. They're done with it, right? So. But, like, you've got, like, you, I don't know if you know what I'm trying to say by, like, you've got this game that, had that where they had a second chance with all these new younger people starting to take this up and they kind of blew it by breaking it right like God of War is trivial but a lot of people are also into that uh, perfecting 100% games like to me it doesn't bother me one way or another to for that little glitch okay does that glitch prevent 100% completion? it not in the trophies but in the overall game yes 